Hey everyone, welcome to Rick's 135th scale models. My name is Rick. Today I'm going to be starting the build process of the Border Model 135th scale Leopard 2A7V. Now the neat thing is this is video number 100. So that's exciting. I finally got to that point. But I wanted to go into this part. Now I did do a video review on the open box of the model. Um, I have now built the model. I want to go through the process of that after this video. The next part it will be the painting and weathering of it to make it look real authentic. Now it did have some little small hiccups in it. Nothing major. I will talk about those in the build process. So let's get started. The initial stage of the model is building the lower hall. You know, that comes in multiple sections. You have the sides, the top, and the base. And then there's some supports you put in the middle. It, it all goes together real simple. There's no big complicated process in here. Just make sure you get all the little sprue pieces cleaned off right and the fit is snug or you will have alignment issues later on in the build. What I did do is I added clamps uh, that made it hold together a lot snugger and dried and a lot more squared and solid form. I did after that do a little bit of internal uh, glue supports. Like I said overall it goes together really simple. It's a good fit. Just make sure you get all the edges and everything fits snug and you'll have a good fitting overall finished product. Then it came time to assemble all the road wheels. There's quite a few pieces and they, I do like the fact they have the poly caps which makes them uh, removable. Uh, there are only two sprue pieces on each side of the track. Uh, it makes it pretty simple to clean. I use a sander. No real big complication there. Continue with all the uh, return supports for the tracks. Uh, they're all real good detail. They don't move and they're almost impossible to see once the kit's built, but I did like the fact that they had a lot of good detail in here. If you wanted to have the side skirts up or removed, uh, it would be nice. You can see the details. On the radio box for the infantry uh, that sits on the back of the tank, it didn't have a very good handle on it, so I cut that off. And what I ended up doing is a little piece of uh, sprue and a circle, glued that on, and then took some of the straight PE sheet uh, sprue and made the handle out of that. It worked out quite nicely, and I just used parts that were in the kit. The other part was adding the convoy placard uh, that sits on the back. Now, they had this huge connection point which was pretty disgusting so I ended up cutting it all off it actually sits and hangs loosely so that it doesn't get damaged when they're moving so I made it similar to that uh, it worked out much better and I was very happy with the results I did a real quick double checking of my alignment to make sure it was in the right place and then moved on to the next stage And one of the things I added here were the uh, tow cable return guards that uh, sits right on either side where the tow cable sits inside of that. Also, the uh, newer Leopards have additional tail lights, which uh, are for night vision illumination. Uh, I had to make sure they were done. So I once again double checked the reference material, made sure they were correct, and then uh, glued them in place. Now on the back of the tank there's a hitch point. Um, it has a catch on it for releasing it and it's not on the model. So what I did is I just took, drilled a hole in the actual one, took some wire, bent it the correct way it's supposed to be, glued that in place, and then took a little bit of uh, putty and made the handle the way it looks on the real vehicle. Pretty straightforward, easy uh, modification, uh, dressed it up just a little bit. Now 
Now the vehicle does have movable suspension. Uh, here's all the rods that are on the actual tank, so it's a pretty good rendition of how it actually is. The biggest thing to remember here, obviously, is your alignment. You got to make sure they're all fit in snugly and down properly, and then look to at the outside alignment. Uh, one of the things I did notice is it seems like they're a little on the low side. So because of the weight of the model, they'll end up sitting a little low. So you really got to make sure they're fully extended down so that with the weight of the model and once it's completed, it will sit at the right height. After that, it was time to glue on the top of the lower hull. I used a combination of uh, stick glue and liquid glue. I like doing this because the stick glue has a little bit of a resin and a filling factor to it. It also uh, has a lot better glue job. But then using the liquid glue uh, helps it kind of spread out a little bit better. All in all, it ends up making it a real solid glue point. Now my intention was to add handles and I was going to design those with the 3D design and then print my own. But what I needed to do is prepare all the points by removing the plastic little nubs they have as handles. So it was just a matter of going around and cutting them all off and then sanding it smooth. Now uh, you have two choices here, or actually three. You can either leave it as it is, which is okay. You can cut them off and use wire, or like I did, uh, use the resin ones. They're a little more fragile, but they're a little more realistic in size. I found it to be a real nice result. Next, I was looking at the track assist plate. Now, it's real thick, and uh, the ends don't look correct. So I first tried to modify it to see if I could clean it up, and really quickly realized that it wasn't going to work. So I measured it up, uh, got all the diet dimensions for it and then went to designing my own. Once I got it printed successfully and uh, going in the right direction, took it, measured it, and, uh, checked my fitting a few times with the original one and then went to glue it. Uh, this part, what I ended up doing is, is you've got the plastic saw that goes on top so I really had to sit down and work on the fitting to make sure everything worked just right. I was real happy with the overall results. It's a little on the brittle side, real thin, um, but uh, ends up being real nice results. So the kit itself has some real nice PE sheets for the radiator covers. Uh, what I normally would do will be take them and put the glue down on the plastic side and then place them, take a little bit of air pressure and blow through downward to make sure all the little metal vents are cleared out. Unfortunately, I forgot to do that this time. So on one side, there's a little bit of glue visible on the perimeter. It kind of filled some of the holes. Um, I was able to salvage some of it, but it's mostly covered up, so I let it be. Biggest thing there is, like I said, remember to not put too much glue down or you'll end up filling all the holes and lose the neat effect. Now on all the handles I had uh, cut off, I had to drill the holes. The holes are three millimeters apart and I just basically drilled it down just a minute amount uh, so that I could have enough depth for the glue to sit in and uh, secure the handle properly. I would put a little bit of glue on the uh, wood panel there. I use CA glue and then uh, place the handle in there. And this is one of those things that either works perfectly the first time or you fight that one. Biggest thing is make sure you don't get any glue on your tweezers or you'll be uh, 
fighting that issue the whole time. Now on the model you have your front fender, these little covers that go on the ends. Uh, the way the model has it going on when you look at it, it almost looks like you want it with these little dimple holes on the inside but in reality they're on the outside so I uh, filled the holes and then sanded it down smooth so that it was uh, properly look when you're looking at this there's a little step in it uh, so make sure that you have that step facing outward and there is definitely a right and a left uh, and they, they do not have any dimples it's a smooth piece of rubber so uh, just something to address no real big challenge just don't miss it or you'll be mad at yourself later on. Working on the front heavy side skirts, uh, real straightforward. It's neat because you do have the option here to have them open or closed, uh, folded up or down. Uh, they have lots of detail within them. Uh, I was having them down, so most of it's covered up. But they do have a lot of extra sprue on the inside of these you have to remove to have them fit properly. Once the side skirts and uh, front and rear were installed, I began prepping and working on the front. There's uh, quite a few details around the Spectus 2 and the headlight covers. It does have uh, night uh, illumination headlights also. So you got to make sure you get all those parts in and properly aligned. And working on the turret uh, initially is pretty straightforward, nothing major there. It does have a metal barrel, uh, which works it real nice. Make sure, though, that when you're doing the uh, parts that support the barrel on the inside of the turret, you don't sand them or do anything or it'll be too loose in the barrel because the weight will sag, basically. Now on the top of the barrel in the front there is a, the sight system and then also there's a cover that is movable. This is another one of those parts. Make sure you don't glue it in place or the barrel won't work properly and it won't lay properly. Uh, it's been my experience on all my border kits and pretty much all of them. You do have to make sure you work on your fit so it's a nice smooth process so that as you move the barrel up and down it naturally stays and hangs. From there I worked on the back end, there's a lot of good details on your uh, different panels and access points. I liked how they went about all these different uh, overpressure valves for your system here behind the commander. Working on the gunner's main sight uh, here. One of the things that I did not do that, um, in retrospect, because of the added armor plating that goes on top of that, it's almost impossible to get in there and paint it post-build. So I would suggest that you do all your painting of that part prior to doing anything further on it, or you won't really be able to get to it. It's almost impossible. It, it's not real visible either, but definitely you can go about painting it first.
Now the cover for the main site can be open or closed. I generally make them open, but if you want it closed, you can do it that way too. It's your choice. So now here I'm working on the left side of the turret. Uh, a lot of the parts have been added. Everything here went together great. The only thing that I did discover, and it's pretty significant, they ask you to put, when it comes to the side baskets on the either side of the hatches, a part called E5 on the left side and E6 on the right side. In actuality, it's E5 and E6 on both sides. Now, when you do this, there's a little hook on the top portion. So the best thing to remember is E5, as you look at the side, will be on your left side. And E6, as you look at it, will be on the right side. That way the hook faces inward, and that's how it latches. Now, the model does not tell you uh, to do this. It has you doing them backwards. When you look at the real vehicles, you can see how it is really done. The other thing is when it comes to putting those side baskets on, it will be almost impossible to add the decal underneath it because it actually, in, on the real tank, the decal goes slightly up underneath on the left side. So what I would suggest is not installing it, building it, but not gluing it down until after you put, paint it and put the decals on, then add it after. I think you'll overall have a better result. Uh, it's something I did in retrospect I will do it differently on the next one I build. Now behind the loader there's a basket with um, on the real tank there's a bungee cord kind of a uh, system that sits on top of this little basket I'm assembling here. What this is for is when they're out on the range firing, they put the spent base of the shells in here to storage. They don't like to throw them on the ground because of uh, the debris and uh, it causes also apparently if a vehicle drives over it, sometimes it pops tires. So they're responsible to return all of those to the range when they get done shooting and that's where they store them in their training exercises. that goes behind the uh, loader that sits on top of the blow-off uh, hatch for the ammunition. One of the things you're going to notice, and I just had a question asked to me on the uh, text is of one of my videos, I've noticed on all my Leopards that the front armor plate isn't in straight alignment from the right and left side. The right side, which is the gunner's side actually extends further forward and on the real leopard it actually looks like that too. If you look at this video here you can kind of see how the uh, main turret it does stick a little farther forward. So uh, as you build it don't panic when you don't see them aligned properly that's how they are in the real vehicles. I started building all the boxes that sit behind the turret. Now I've done the main kit and they were really, really highly detailed and nice. Uh, on this vehicle there, it's the same way. Really nice detail, amazing quality. Very impressed with the overall finish between the baskets, the air conditioner, uh, and the different uh, storage boxes they have back there. 
came out to be a real nice model, real nice quality. Now here I'm building the right side basket that sits on the side of the, uh, right outside the hatch. Now once again, this is the same thing. You've got your E5 and E6 parts. And uh, the biggest thing to, like I said, to remember there is E5 will be on the right and E6 will be on the left. So that the little hook on the top of it faces inward and you'll see a point on the side of the basket real small that it connects into. Now all these are very very small parts um, but uh, you want to take your time and do it right and you'll notice it. I found the PE sheets to be uh, really uh, soft and nice and easy to work with, not too delicate, but definitely pliable. Uh, what I did use here though is, is I used a paintbrush rod to get the circle bend on it just about perfect. Uh, it's, it's kind of in between different angles, so it worked out nicely. Once it was in there, I used a little bit of glue on the sides and then made sure that I got it all out of the uh, little hole area so that it didn't mess up the overall finish result. So I've glued the left side basket on and then I'm getting ready to do the right side basket. Now this is another one of those in retrospect I wish I would have uh, not put the cover on them initially. Uh, I've noticed if you look a lot of pictures of the real ones you'll see items inside of there stored. Uh, but it kind of makes it hard to paint it. Uh, one of the things I see a lot of is like orange uh, vests and things like that you'll, you'll notice. Uh, in retrospect, I should have left the covers off and then after I painted the thing, added something inside of there and then glued it down. I think it would have made a little more neat effect, um, but on the next one, as I said, that will be one of those I'll do on the next model.
here you can get a pretty good look at the left basket and looks like I said it goes together okay uh, no big major issues or challenges it's just had I left it open I would have had a little more options as far as putting stuff inside of there one of the things I'm gluing on here is the right uh, mud flap holder um, it was real common for the Germans to take the mud flaps in the field and they'd stick them underneath the tow cable and obviously at sometimes they probably had them fall off and lose them so they created a mounting point to take them off and hook them to so they don't lose them when they're training uh, it does not have a left side though so I had to fabricate one and then install that later on Yeah, the tracks go together easily. Uh, what I end up doing is as I build little sections at a time and I, I like the feller glue that has a little applicator. Uh, you fill the little reservoir on the inside and when you pop the track down in there it ends up making the track still work and it's glued securely. I build each one of these little sections and then uh, come back once it's dried and add the center section to connect them all. It works out really good. Uh, makes a real nice result and like I said by doing it this way the track will function and bend and not be glued as a solid unit which is not the goal. Now here I'm adding in some of the resin parts I've designed. Uh, one of the things I've noticed and uh, on the Leopard 2A7V it sits right behind the smoke launcher is a little bag and I am told by members of the Bundeswehr that that is a water bottle bag. Um, I've also noticed that on the standard Leopard 2A7s sitting on the left rear of the turret on the back of the basket. So this is something that you'll see in a lot of different vehicles. Um, I made one, designed it, and then uh, installed it here. The other modification they've been doing and retrofitting all Leopards is a uh, vinyl bag that sits between the loader and the commander's hatch that holds an MP7 submachine gun and then in front of the loader's hatch is a second vinyl bag that holds the G36 uh, assault rifle. They also have uh, a hard box that sits in front of the commander that holds two additional G36 uh, assault rifles. Inside of the tank, they also have additional places for the MP7 submachine gun. But so, that's the uh, build portion of the video. As you can see, I have someone here to decide to bug me. This is about my fourth take at this part of the video, and she won't leave me alone. So, she's going to be part of the video. Anyway, um, a superb model. I love the border kits. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the painting process. Uh, as far as showing you, I've already painted it, but I will be weathering it next. Um, it's an outstanding model. Uh, any of the issues I've had are minor. They can easily work through. It's just giving you everybody a heads up. Anyway, everyone take care. Happy modeling. More videos coming soon, uh, along with the finishing of this model. I do have the Rifield Leopard 2A7V in route as we speak. Should be here in about a week and a half to two weeks. Um, with the upgrade kit and then I also have to start my Leopard 2A7 in the uh, right field model also. But having said all that, let's back to this video. Comments and questions always welcome. Please like, subscribe. Any uh, questions I, I welcome. I will help you with any issues or questions you have. Uh, so as I was starting to say, Take care, happy modeling, get me on Facebook, get me in YouTube with the text if you have any questions or email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions, comments, always welcome. Happy modeling everybody and I'm starting the painting process now. Bye bye. <clears throat> so that's the model. As you can see I have my assistant here supervising my work. Um, anyway, <laughs> film videos is fun. You always have a cat that wants to bug you. So, <laughs> so
So in the process of filming the video, uh, my uh, partner here that tries to get into... So, 